And moving to North Africa, where 24 million people head to the polls on Saturday. The incumbent president, Abdelmajid Tebun, is seeking a second five-year term, and experts say that he faces no real risk to his rule. The 78-year-old presents himself as an independent candidate, but his bid is backed by major political parties, including the historic FLN, which led Algeria's fight for independence against France. Elections in Algeria are traditionally held in December, but in March, Taboon announced that they were being rescheduled. He said it was done so that voting day coincides with the end of summer vacation and the start of the new school's year in hope of increasing voter turnout. Critics say the decision was made so that his opponents have less time to campaign. In the 2019 election, the turnout was below 40%. Taboon was declared president with 58% of the vote. Elections in Algeria come amid growing concern over what rights groups call a steady erosion of human rights under President Abdelmajid Taboon. Over two dozen candidates that uh, signified their intention to run were disqualified or were forced to resign. The opposition leaders claim the president has a uh, fostered an authoritarian climate. In recent years, the North African country has seen dissolution of political parties, civil society groups and independent media. It has also seen a surge in arbitrary arrests and prosecutions under terrorism charges. He faces two opponents. The first is uh, Abdullahi Hassani, the 57-year-old, is the leader of the Movement of Society for Peace, or the MSP, Algeria's main Islamist party, and his campaign is focused on promoting democracy, pluralism, and a competitive political environment in Algeria. In order to establish democracy, pluralism, free competition and rotation of power, so that programs compete in the country and that the demonstrations that lead to unilateralism, one party thinking and one opinion do not continue. The second is Yusuf Achiche. The 41-year-old heads the Socialist Forces Front, or the FFS, and is a member of the parliament's upper house. FFS is Algeria's oldest opposition party. It has boycotted elections in Algeria since 1999. Now, Oichiche has focused his campaign on social issues, improving living standards and democratic reforms. We want to pay more attention to the social sector because helpless people are living in very bad conditions. There is a great deterioration in the purchasing power and people are suffering and for this reason, we must improve the social conditions and raise the standard of living. A change in all sectors in order to establish a democratic and social state as it was transcribed in the proclamation of November 1954 and clarified by the resolutions of the Sumum Congress. Many say President Boone's legacy has offered little hope of a better fortunes and the country's voters too are largely indifferent about the upcoming election, which is unlikely to change the status quo. Whether it's these elections or the last ones on December 12, 2019, it's really the same thing, nothing has changed. During the campaign, there are promises made, but then we discover that they are lies. The real issue is not who will be president since we all know, given the addresses of the main political parties, that it will be Abdel Majid Tebaban who will win a second term. The real issue will be the turnout, popular support. Will Algerians next Saturday, September 7th, go in large numbers to participate in this election? Algeria is Africa's biggest country. It is rich in gas and is the largest exporter of natural gas in the continent. Its vast desert holds major reserves for crude oil and natural gas. The OPEC oil cartel member gets three-fifths of the state income from oil. This goes to subsidize petrol, electricity, health and social services. But despite this, Algeria has struggled to rein in inflation. Algeria has never had a peaceful transition of power. However, it may see one now with Abdul Majid Tebun posed to win a second term.
Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections to climate change to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative.